just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, this week we resolve an argument between two of my friends on Xbox once and for all by reviewing the third entry of EA's trademark series of horror games. Can this game match even beat Samurai Shodan's 95% or is this game going to succumb to the fear? Let's find out. As you may have known, there has been an argument between two of my friends on Xbox over the Dead Space series. As you can probably tell, this argument has been raging on for months, if not years. Obviously, we have decided to step in as the arbitrator and post a review of this classic to stop this argument once and for all. Well, with that aside, let's get on with this. As I have said in my previous review of the second entry of the series, which was posted in the run up to Halloween last year, Visceral Games' Dead Space series has been one of the rising stars of the survival horror genre in the Xbox 360 generation. Taking inspiration directly from Capcom's Resident Evil series, this game was originally released for the Xbox 360, PC and PlayStation 3 in 2013. You play the part of engineer Isaac Clarke, who finds himself in the frozen planet of town Noralis, which holds the key to stopping the plague of mutated reincarnated corpses as the Necromorphs. It is up to you to battle your way through the harsh elements of the planet while uncovering the secret of stopping this genocidal reincarnated plague dead in its tracks. The accessibility score is quite to kick off proceedings visibility give a 9.5. For a visually impaired player this game is quite successful. Although there is no colorblind option there is very little need for one. The majority of on screen elements that you will encounter during the game is colorblind friendly enough as it is. When it comes to doors, a text notification appears in the middle of the door's activation prompt. Also, should the door be unlocked, the prompt has a light blue background. Should the door be locked, the interaction prompt has an orange background. Light blue and orange is an excellent color contrast when it comes to colorblind people. Matter of fact, DICE, the developers of the Battlefield series, actively use this color combination as one of the colorblind modes available in the game. The same color contrast is applied with most items in the game that Isaac can interact with. However, as part of the course, for the horror genre, screen flashes will occur during the game. However, as part of the course of the survival horror genre, screen flashes will occur during the course of the game. However, these screen flashes won't be intense and regular enough to cause a serious problem for a player with photosensitive epilepsy. Next up, Nintendo Audibility gave a perfect 10. There are in-game subtitles which can be enabled and disabled via the Agario section of the game's options menu. However, the font size of these subtitles cannot be customized. This puts a player who is reliant on a subtitle function at risk of getting ice ring while trying to play the game, although that the risk is very minimal, especially on a 4K monitor or TV, it still needs addressing nonetheless. So a player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with no issues, but customization of the font size of the subtitles can make this game more accessible. Next up on the agenda, Mobility has scored a 7.5. This game is the most accessible for the Dead Space series. The teething problems with the PC version of the previous two entries has been ironed out. For example, you can bind any action to a mouse button. This gives a mobility impaired player a little extra choice of to which peripheral he or she wants to play the game in. In terms of controller support and the console version, the problem still exists. There is no legacy stick layout available. So if you are to be interested in playing this game but has a mobility impairment, best to go for the PC version. 
in short, this is how the previous two games should have been designed in the first place. Last but certainly not least, gameplay has scored a 7. Although one of the game's high reliance on action rather than horror, inspired by Capcom's Resident Evil series, still waters down the experience that you would expect from a horror game. However, the Half-Life-esque puzzle-solving elements slows the pace down which is very rare in the survival horror genre. Also, the game cues of Unreal Engine 3 makes the game look a lot better than the previous two entries of the series. What makes this game really stand out from the crowd is the game's dismemberment mechanic. Instead of shooting an enemy to cause damage, you can target specific pipes, that's an enemy's body, to dismember the target's limbs, which causes a lot of damage. In summary, Dead Space 3 is a fairly decent survival horror game. As I've said earlier, the game's reliance on action detracts from the experience. This game is still a lot of fun to play. Also, this game has online co-op. You can team up with a friend and play through the entirety of the game's campaign on Xbox Live. This game is fairly cheap to buy on Xbox and Steam. Also, this game is playable on your Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles via backwards compatibility. And the hated online pass issue has been solved as it can be downloaded for free. This game is available for your EA Play or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate membership. At least try this game before you knock it. And the overall score is 85%. See you guys in the next review. Spartan Commander 1998. Roll out Spartan Legion.